Beauty and the Beast. Once upon a time, a spoiled, selfish prince lived in a castle in the forest. One night, an old beggar woman offered the prince a rose in return for shelter. Repulsed by her appearance, the young kind prince turned her away. Suddenly, the old woman turned into an enchantress. She transformed the prince into a beast and placed a spell on the entire castle. To break the spell, the prince would have to learn to love and be loved in return before the last rose petal fell. Otherwise, he would remain a beast forever. Not far away, a young woman named Belle lived in a small village. She dreamed of a more exciting life and wanted adventures like the ones in her favourite books. Belle was very beautiful and had long been admired by Gaston, the most handsome and vain man in the village. Gaston was certain that Belle would feel lucky to marry him. But Belle thought Gaston was rude and bad-mannered, and he didn't understand her love of books. Belle returned home to find her father Maurice surrounded by pieces of his latest invention. I'll never get this boneheaded contraption to work, said Maurice. Yes, you will, said Belle, and you'll win first prize at the fair tomorrow. With Belle's encouragement, Maurice quickly finished his automatic wood chopper. Then he loaded it onto a wagon and set out with his horse Philippe for the fair. Belle knew the villagers thought Maurice was odd, but he was her father and she always believed in him. As evening fell, Maurice realized he had taken a wrong turn. He was lost deep in the forest. When wolves howled nearby, Philippe threw Maurice off and bolted. The snarling wolves cornered Maurice in front of a huge gate. He banged on the gate until it opened, then gratefully stumbled inside. Maurice crept into the enormous castle that lay beyond the gate. Before long, he heard voice, voices whispering. He nervously picked up a candlestick to light his way. Hello, said the candlestick. Maurice couldn't believe his ears. All of a sudden, the castle seemed full of enchanted objects that can move and talk. The candlestick, whose name was Lumiere, led Maurice to a comfortable chair in front of a warm fire. Suddenly, a terrifying beast stormed into the room. So you've come to stare, the beast growled. I meant no harm, Maurice stammered. I needed a place to stay. I'll give you a place to stay, the beast snarled. Then he locked Maurice in the dungeon. Meanwhile, Gaston arrived at Belle's cottage. He announced that Belle's dreams were about to come true. He had made all of the preparations and planned for them to marry that very day. I'm very sorry, Gaston, but I don't deserve you, Belle replied. She opened the door and... Splat! Gaston lost his balance on the way out and fell into a large, muddy puddle. Gaston's sidekick, LeFou, stopped conducting the wedding band and asked Gaston what had happened. Gaston was furious. I'll have Belle for my wife. Make no mistake about that, he shouted. Just then, a frightened Philippe galloped into the yard. What happened? asked Belle. Where's Papa? You have to take me to him. So Philippe led Belle in the direction of the castle. Belle bravely searched the castle until she found her father shivering and coughing in the dungeon. Before Maurice could warn Belle, the beast lunged from the shadows. He refused to let Maurice go. Finally, when Belle offered to take her father's place, the beast agreed with one condition. You must promise to stay here forever, he said. 
maurice raced back to the village shouting for help to rescue bell from a horrible beast but no one believed him meanwhile bell met some of the castle's enchanted servants including a teapot called mrs potts her son chip and a clock named cogsworth that was a very brave thing you did said mrs potts thinking about how bell had saved her father bell refused to join the beast for dinner instead she waited until it was late then crept down to the kitchen to bell's delight the staff treated her to a magnificent feast with singing and dancing they were thrilled to finally have a guest after dinner bell wanted to explore the castle the beast had forbidden her to go into the west wing but bell was curious bell peered into a dark room and gasped broken furniture and mirrors laid scattered as if someone had torn everything apart in a rage then bell saw a rose glowing under a glass dome she noticed that several petals had fallen off entranced by its beauty bell reached out but before bell could touch the rose the beast burst into the room i warned you never to come here he shouted he bellowed do you know what you could have done get out terrified bell ran from the castle promise or no promise i can't stay here another minute she cried she climbed onto philippe who was waiting outside and raced into the forest soon they were surrounded by ferocious wolves suddenly the beast sprung from the shadows he fought off the wolves until bell was safe but the beast had been injured bell returned to the castle to help nurse the beast's wounds if you hadn't run away this wouldn't have happened he complained if you hadn't frightened me i wouldn't have run away bell replied then she added thank you for saving my life you're welcome the beast said quietly as the days passed bell began to see a different beast he was learning to be gentle and kind even little birds noticed the difference in him perching on his shoulders and eating bird seed from his paws everyone at the castle watched bell and the beast with hope it seemed as if the pair was beginning to care for one another maybe just maybe the spell would finally be broken and everyone would become human again one evening after an elegant dinner bell and the beast danced together the beast gazed at bell he wondered if he would ever find the courage to tell bell that he loved her the beast knew how much bell missed maurice he showed her a magic mirror revealing an image of her father lost and trembling with cold as he desperately searched for bell sadly the beast released bell from her promise and let her return home to her father he gave bell the mirror to remember him by with only one petal left on the enchanted rose it seemed that any hope of breaking the spell was gone forever bell rushed home to maurice to their surprise chip had sneaked into her bag and come along too how did you escape that horrible beast asked maurice he's different now papa bell said but before she could explain there was a knock at the door gaston had bribed the owner of an asylum to declare bell's father insane maurice would be locked up in the asylum unless bell agreed to marry gaston as the guards dragged maurice away gaston cornered bell i might be able to clear up this little misunderstanding he said slyly if you marry me never replied bell to prove that her father wasn't crazy bell showed people the the beast's image in the magic mirror he's my friend she told them jealous and enraged gaston seized the magic the mirror kill the beast he shouted gaston locked bell and maurice in their cottage then he le 
led a band of angry men to the castle. With Belle gone, the beast no longer cared about anything. Just let them come, he said. But when the angry mob stormed inside, the servants were ready. The men ran away. Only Gaston remained. Finding the beast alone, Gaston raised his bow. When the arrow hit him, the beast staggered back, crashing through the window and on to the castle roof. Gaston followed the beast outside and raised a club. Before he could strike, Belle screamed out from below. No! She and Maurice had escaped from the cottage and raced to the castle. Startled, Gaston paused. The beast heard Belle's voice too and was filled with hope. He suddenly found the strength to defend himself. The beast lunged at Gaston, then decided to let him go. He climbed over to a terrace where Belle had run to meet him. All of a sudden, Gaston stabbed the beast. He roared with pain and whipped around, accidentally knocking Gaston off the roof. Gaston plunged through the darkness as he fell to the ground. Belle pulled the beast to safe safety and kneeled beside him. You came back, he whispered. At least I got to see you one last time. Please don't leave me, Belle sobbed. I love you. As Belle spoke, the last rose petal fell. Then out of nowhere, magical sparkles began to swirl around the beast. He rose into the air, slowly, turning slowly in a shower of light. Belle watched in disbelief as the beast began to transform. Magic swelled above the castle as the servants were transformed too. The spell was broken. Belle, cried the handsome prince, it's me. Belle gazed into the prince's eyes. It really is you, she said in wonder. Later, the servants watched as Belle and her prince waltzed across the ballroom. Are they going to live happily ever after? Chip asked his mother. Of course, my dear, Mrs. Potts replied. And so they did.